Welcome to Rick Talk, where I get the stories of success. My guest today is Ray Friedman, CEO of Mile 2, a cybersecurity certification training company. Ray and I have worked together for about 15 years uh, with my old company, CTC Train Canada and CTE Solutions. That, that company was sold to Global Knowledge a few years ago, but I'm proud to say that Ray and I are partners again, working with Ultimate IT Courses, Mile 2 Canada, and we may need to change that to Kilometer 2, but... Uh, you know. So, uh, Ray, welcome to the show and tell us about Mile 2. Well, uh, Mile 2 Canada was, uh, for those who aren't familiar with Mile 2's uh, development, was an ever-growing certification program in the Canadian region. In fact, it goes for almost 15 years. During that time, uh, we've done a great amount of market presence through your organization, through, into D&D, and of course, the development of the very popular Mile, ter, uh, mile 2 certified ISSO. So the relationship was very critical that once Global Knowledge purchased uh, CTC, it was critical for us to actually continue the branding because, of, again, of our market presence. So uh, why Mile 2 over other cybersecurity companies? What makes Mile 2 different? So the Certification industry has really evolved the last five years. Uh, historically, certifications were focused more for data or information and assessing the value or the knowledge of that data based on an exam. We, we took that concept and mapped it uh, around under the NIST umbrella and focused our certification programs based around role-based certifications. And so the idea here is, is not only to assess the knowledge and the data that you need to ensure that you master that uh, discipline, but it was even more critical for us to ensure that the individual taking our training really is mapped to their job role. So data application uh, creates uh, organizational efficiency, and this has been very, very important, especially with the certified ISSO. It focuses very heavily around the job role ISSO or ISO. Yeah, okay. And we're finding a lot of that with our d d customers in Canada and the ISSO uh, jobs that are available out there. Um, so what are the, some of the most popular certifications available now? Well, the IT and information systems management industry has really grown, right? I mean, about 10 years ago, the concept of ethical hacker was uh, paradoxical at best. But now uh, these are disciplines that everyone is trying to master. So the base knowledge of just technology, IT technology, and cybersecurity has really been developed even in the K-12 uh, market space. And in college, they're applying these disciplines in undergrad and graduate degree programs. So we are a very, we're focused heavily on specific expertise or disciplines like information systems and incident handling and auditing, uh, management, and uh, forensics and pen testing. Uh, what we have found is our penetration testing and ethical hacking series is probably the most prominent and most, um, I'd consider that our flagship globally. The certified ISSO is, is pretty competitive and heavily focuses around the managerial circle. So the certified ISSO, uh, the mile two penetration testing or the CPTE or the professional ethical hacker, uh, but the newest one that's really uh, gaining momentum is the cybersecurity uh, analyst uh, certification because that job role really is encompassing and allows you to, uh, I guess, incorporate multiple disciplines in one job role. So, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, before the pandemic, cybersecurity was number one. Like, that was what was in the newspapers, everybody was talking about it. Sure. And then the pandemic hit, and uh, cybersecurity sort of hasn't been uh, at the forefront as it was in the past, but it's starting to get there again. So um, it's it's just really interesting how it, it's really coming back at top of mind. Uh, so why, I mean, there's some new courses that you have too, or some older courses that you put together, the, the foundational ones. So why is security the job of everyone in an organization, not just the IT people? You know, that's one of the best questions that should be asked, and it's because of this. Uh, there was multiple reports that when you're dealing with a hack or a compromisation of your infrastructure network, it's often not the case that it's these advanced persistent threats. It's not the 
high level uh, hacker that's remotely in Ukraine or Russia or China. Um, it's usually 97% the problem is this standard employee. They're not subject or they're not adhering to cybersecurity corporate policies. And so it's so critical to allow this ideology and ment mentality to be engaged by every single employee. And therefore, by doing so, you create an overall cybersecurity culture. People are vigilant. There's a sense of sobriety and uh, looking for uh, specific things that you know may be a, an issue. Also, learning to respect discipline and policies where even the average employee doesn't matter from executive down to those who are answering the phones adhere to very simple uh, cybersecurity policies and practices. And it's because of them starting off with the boots on the ground. It's critical that they are the ones that are allowing this may I say, fortress of cybersecurity. And it all starts off with just the person answering the phone or uh, uh, you know, putting in data into a computer. So we've got to be sober-minded and realize that this job function is not the cybersecurity department, it's everybody. Yeah, it's really, it's all about awareness within an organization. Right. And uh, I mean, that's the thing with Mile 2, Mile 2 Canada, Ultimate IT Courses is our goal is really to uh, give an organization, whether it be government, whether it be uh, corporations, the tools that they need in order to, um, you know, have a safe place um, for documentation for your company. Um, you know, just that, that's the goal and that's what we're able to offer from the managers um, to the administrators, to the technical people from A to Z. So what makes Mile 2 different in the, I guess, curriculum or course material um, that they get with Mile 2? So for every course that the student is registered into, they get something called the ultimate combo. And we call it the ultimate because it's everything and anything you need to get uh, receive or procure your certification program. Of course, the ultimate combo can be purchased independently. But what's really great about it is, is that it's not just curriculum. It, we include a prep guide to help uh, you know, embellish your skills when it comes to the certification uh, system. You get an exam voucher, of course. Um, you also get a computer-based training video that covers all of the different modules. And there is an exposition of a real live instructor. So you're able to hear exactly how the instructor articulates and extrapolates the concepts. But what makes it even better and more advantageous than any other program in the world is that we provide in these high level certifications a second free shot to anybody who's in, in Canada. And so this is our way of saying thank you for all the years. There's been a lot of success and we reciprocally want to give back. So Yeah, it's amazing. And I mean I mean the goal is that you want to get people certified. Obviously, you know, some people aren't great at writing an exam. So they may need to take a second shot at it. Uh, may need to go back and you know restudy the information and and get up to speed with it. But yeah, the second shot I think is a amazing option uh, in Canada. So that's great. So I also would like to include Mile Two is focused on education and that it should be affordable, available uh, to anyone. We truly feel that it's about allowing our our country and North America to develop a strong infrastructure to counter respond to the many attacks in these global uh, counter-terroristic attacks. And we should be zealous to ensure that this type of education is available and cost-effective. And so the ultimate combo, that's one of the reasons why it's so popular. Anybody can afford it. And uh, hey, we named the Canadian company Ultimate IT Courses. So that's what I'm talking ultimate, about. It's the way to go. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I guess, so can you tell us a little bit about accreditations? I mean, that's a big thing with Mile 2 as well. I mean, you just don't uh, talk the talk. Um, you've got a lot of accreditations uh, for your products. Right. So accreditations is kind of like elusive, right? Uh, but one thing is certain is that we have our accreditations and acknowledgements. And I think it started back in 2013. We felt the need to... Uh, receive some of our uh, certification programs like the CPTE to get accredited with the NSA academic subdivision called the CNSS. And we received, I believe, six accreditations between 2011 to 2016. 
Obviously, uh, the cybersecurity world has evolved, and now what's really important is, is your certification NIST mapped to a rule-based? And so we pursued that, and now we're on the Homeland uh, Security NICS training schedule. So we have those things. We're also on the preferred FBI degree and certification between Tier 1 and, and Tier 3, and we're now pursuing IAS uh, global accreditation. So we, we're, we're accredited, acknowledged, and and all over the place, but ultimately, I think it's the experience that really is our accreditation when students go through it and say, wow, this is very powerful, very direct. It's not cryptic, it's not ambiguous information, and it focuses on uh, roles, roles and jobs that are so critical and emerging in our industry. Not, not to mention you're on the standing offer in Canada for federal government, so that's, that's a great place to be. Um, I guess another thing would just be about, I mean, you've got great curriculum, um, you know, great delivery, uh, excellent product. Uh, but the main thing I think with with teaching is instructors. So can you give us uh, an idea of your instructor's skills? Absolutely. So it was about 15 years ago, maybe. I stepped into my first cybersecurity executive position and I was tasked to developing a hacking uh, applications or uh, networks, Cisco networks and Microsoft applications. And I realized immediately that the only way to really understand the subject matter is to intimately be involved in, you know, under the hood. Our engineers uh, that we choose, they're not only globally known authors and developers, but they are out in the workspace. They're boots on the ground. They've experienced these policies and practices that we theoretically like to talk about. So these, these individuals, the Kevin Henrys and the Johnny Justices, they, they've worked for secret agencies and government uh, agencies and also developed at a very high level. I mean, we, we created the, while Kevin Henry was with us, we created the C-Risk uh, curriculum for ISACA. We built certain portions of the CompTIA, whether it's Security Plus or Cloud, with some of the approved uh, vendors. We were involved uh, indirectly with some of the IC squared uh, stuff. But um, what makes us so different is that our instructors are true consultants or real information assurance engineers, and they're able to bring these theories practically into life. Amazing. Can you tell us about the Cyber Academy at Mile 2? The Cyber Academy was specifically developed for uh, college, trade schools, and four-year degree programs. And what makes it really exciting is that we're able to go ahead and implement Mile 2 curriculum in undergraduate or you know, associate degree uh, programs. And so we have a fully designed uh, system where you can utilize our curriculum, our video systems, our LMS, and it really empowers the university professor or instructor uh, with the labs and the curriculum and the prep testing. And, but what makes it even more advantageous versus other degree programs is that these classes are literally mapped to a certification exam. So the students are able to go ahead and even at minimum four to eight certifications by the time they graduate, they're not only, not only do they have a degree, not only do they have their diploma, but they have real uh, scenario simulated experiences along with all of these certifications. So they're very employable. And this is very critical for our workforce development and military uh, team members that are coming from, from overseas or individuals that want to learn a new discipline or get into a, a new trade. So this is a perfect system to implement and it has been so explosive. In fact, we believe that this market space is going to uh, probably be the most popular demographic group uh, that we're that we're being developed in. Ultimately, around the world, it's going to be a huge success. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I know with the universities, IT, all that type of thing. I mean, you go into a computer program, you know, you spend three, four years in university or college, you come yeah. out, and it's all old technology. I mean, they need to work with organizations like Mile Two. To, to be up to date and have all the right tools that they need right away when they graduate. So I think it's amazing. Um, universities should be doing more of these things with other organizations. And, yep. um, you know, I mean, the goal is that when students come out that they can get jobs. And I think this will really help them get jobs. 
Can, can I also say this, Rick? I think that yeah. one of the advantages of going through our university degree support program is that our classes start from the very beginning. Security awareness, then the operating, and then networking, and then security principles, and they ultimately evolve to the discipline that they want, whether it's uh, an information systems manager, whether it's penetration testing, you know, expert or a digital forensics uh, uh, engineer or analyst. And so the evolution of the education is modular. It's not one stop shop. It's not, oh, uh, like some of our competitors, EC Council, RC Squared, they have mainly or prominently one course. This is an evolution, an evolving uh, knowledge based certification system that's rolled. Based. So it's it's excellent. So basically, it follows the whole road roadmap, multi roadmap. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll post that. Uh, we'll give everybody access to the to the roadmap. Uh, it's had uh, great success with our customers and our partners. Uh, really makes it simple for salespeople as well as as students uh, to know where where they want to be and what they want to do next. Awesome. That's why they call it a roadmap. Hey, Ray, one of the big uh, certifications out there is CISSP. I mean, we deliver, obviously, CISP, but we also do the CISSO. Can you maybe tell us what the difference is and where um, people may want to take a CISSO instead of a CISSP and vice versa? Absolutely. So CISSP has been around for, I think, 30, 40 years. It's probably the most uh, globally known uh, general or managerial cybersecurity certification. And we respect that, uh, I, I think, very highly of IC Squared and the CISSP program. But we felt like we wanted to create something that was unique and distinct from CISSP, especially since it's in Canada. Uh, the ISSO course was a uh, requirement and priority, especially within the DND. And we wanted to take that ISSO role based uh, curriculum and allow it to evolve into. A certification program. So the CISSP is very data centric and it's been around a long time. We kind of feel in some ways it's kind of a legacy certification. It's a little archaic. Uh, we like to focus on the certified ISSO more as a emerging and role-based certification program. And so we implement the major eight domains. We break them up to more palatable uh, subjects. I think it's 18 or 19 depending on what uh, the 2020 one curriculum, uh, you know, what, what, what it's going to do disclose. There's some, some new uh, modules that we're going to implement there, but it's very relevant to our job in 2021. It's uh, refreshed every six months to, to 12 months, and it's very centric around your job. The one awesome part about the CISSO is that it does cover the exam objectives, generally speaking, of the CISSP. So you can sit for the CISSO, uh, accomplish the exam, which is uh, does it, it lacks ambiguity uh, and uh, cryptic questions. So if you know the information, you can pass the exam. We're, we, we try to avoid uh, some of these guesswork. Um, and we believe that if you know the subject matter, you should be able to pass. So the distinction is, is multifaceted. Number one, it's job role based. It's focused on emerging technologies. Uh, three, the examination is uh, more uh, direct versus ambiguous and cryptic, and ultimately, this is a this is where the industry is going. The CISSO is where it's at, and it's probably the most popular certification uh, course that uh, is being initiated and implemented all over the world in universities, academies, training centers, and huge corporate and private companies. Great. So, I mean, what you're basically saying is, if you take the CISSO, you can probably write the CISSP exam as well. So you're getting a lot more bang for your buck. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Okay. And then, yeah. Awesome. All right, Ray. Well, thank you very much uh, for meeting with me today. I mean, we're, what, about a thousand miles away? You're in Florida. I'm here in Ottawa. Yeah, you're in uh, five degrees Celsius or zero, and I'm in 45 degrees Celsius, uh, enjoying Florida weather near the water. So there's a big difference and divide between us two. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty jealous. It's actually one degree here. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, um, really looking forward to working with, with you again with Ultimate IT Courses and uh, really pushing Mile 2 Canada. And um, again, uh, great relationship and looking forward to um, killing it here in Canada. 
Thank you, Rick, for having me, and I'm excited with and, and uh, to see what 2021 has in store for all of us. So let's go get it.